Hello everyone, what is going on? This is Mike Asamati and this is If One Thing Changed. What if one thing changed? What would happen? What would be the difference? What would be the outcome? It's like a whole butterfly effect type of deal. And I'm actually a strong believer on that. This game has no volume control. Please listen to this chime and adjust your system volume. Until it's a good volume for you, as there may be loud sounds contained within the game. Okay. Sounds like something that you would hear on an airplane. Safety mode is considered in this option. This story may contain situations that you may find uncomfortable. This story is completely fictional and is not based on experiences. Neither I or anyone have I ever met. If you are sensitive to the realistic situations, I would not recommend you play this game. There are no images, just music and sounds. Kamehamezen, Kamehazen, Ze, is the creator of this game. He has a YouTube right here, you can see that. Alright, so let's see what this game's about. Mom and Dad are fighting again. It feels like every day now. And obviously, it is about me again. Why does it feel that this is all my fault? This is sad. Especially the music. And I have done everything wrong. It really feels as it was not long ago. Not long ago that all three of us were happy. Sweetie, it's dinner time! Love me some dindins! I love food. Always have. So I looked forward to it. To all meals. And snacks. And candy. Same here, girl! I quickly ran to the table. As I sat down, a plate was set in front of me. Mashed potatoes, peas, and a juicy pork chop was placed in front of me. I love mashed potatoes and Dad's famous pork chops. Mashed potatoes are pretty popular. I'm a mashed potato fan myself. Really any kind of meat. But his pork chops were my favorite. Peas, on the other hand, I did not really like. Peas and pork... Mashed... I pushed away the plate, leaving only the pea spread across the plate. Why did the music just stop like that? Moving them around doesn't count as eating them. Eat them as well, so you will grow up smart and pretty. <laughs> I already am. I pushed away the plate, with only the peas remaining. Honey, you need to eat those to help you become a very smart girl. Oh! I'm left with a choice. Now, be me! Now, should I answer this in the realistic approach and just eat my peas, or should I just answer this in the logical sense of where the story's gonna take me? Um... Hmm... I'm a pea lover, I love peas with my mashed potatoes, so I'm gonna eat my peas. Because I don't see it, anything wrong with them. I never liked peas. But they were never that bad. So you had a fit over them. But I like but I believed my mother when she said it would make me smart. I was such a gullible child. But it made mom smile. White. I remember school being a different story. I was cute, but also kind of a tomboy. There was this one time. Once at school, during recess, boy do I miss having those. Same here, when I was in school at least. The time to play and run around when no one would tell you how to had things to do. Hey, come play with us! I was so surprised. I was new in this school and I felt I was already making friends. Which made me happy and well, eager to please. 
I was more than willing to follow my new friend. Over to a couple other children at the side of the school. Once I got there, they were gathering small rocks for whatever reason, so I joined to help gather rocks. Did not know how it happened, but we changed from collecting rocks to throwing them. Next thing I knew, a window was broken. <clears throat> I wasn't me. Hell, I didn't even throw a rock yet. Next thing heard was, I can't get in trouble, my mommy will be so mad at me. Then why don't you throw the rock? Please say you did it. You're my best friend, please. I never had a best friend before. Teacher rushes over to almost screaming. Are you kids okay? Who broke this window? Why were you kids throwing rocks? You are in so much trouble. He rattled on so quickly, I couldn't follow how angry he was. I had to decide quickly. Tell the truth, always be honest. She threw the rock, I said as I pointed to my new friend. As soon as I did, the other kids pointed in agreement that it was her. Last thing I remember of that was the pain of her screaming. I hate you, I hate you, you're not my friend. Okay, but if you just made a new friend on that same day, you're obviously not besties. Those words echoed in my head, and it hurts to think that I betrayed a friend. But I was just telling the truth. Nothing wrong with being honest. Always be honest. Why did it hurt so much? White. I don't know if that, I don't know if that means it's a good thing that it's showing that, or it's a bad thing. Thinking back, I was usually alone. I had very few friends, but I was always trying to outdo what I saw others do. Jungle gyms, monkey bars, swings. Oh yes, I loved swings. It was where you would find me most of the time, at school or at the park. I remember kids jumping from the swings, from as high as they could to see how far they would go. And when they were done, I always felt I could do better. One day I did. That day, after the kids left, I went over and decided to cop them. But for some reason, it, it wasn't enough. I got on that swing and went as hard as I could. As high as I could. I wanted to fly. I closed my eyes and I felt the rush. As I flew up and down, back and forth, the wind rushing past me, that is when it came to me. Uh, I don't... I don't know what to choose. It Like, if I let go, is she gonna get hurt? Or if I don't let go, would I feel insecure about myself? Fuck. Um, I have to look at this from a perspective where if I did it. But it's like how old's the kid, too. Let go. At the highest point, I let go. And I flew. The wind rushing past, my heart a flutter. Then I opened my eyes. I made a mistake. I didn't. Fuck! I was a kid after all. I don't hit the land at some point. I screamed as I looked down from what I felt like miles. Second felt like minutes. I watched the ground then come toward me then. I can't remember much. Adults running toward me. Sirens, blood and pain. The pain. Eight weeks. Eight weeks in those cast. Ah. Oh. But if, like, if you're a kid, of course you're gonna make mistakes, then you learn from those mistakes. At least that's- that's what I went through when I was a kid. I mean, right? I broke an arm and a leg. It must have cost my parents a fortune. But I got hurt so badly, and they put me on some pill. 
I couldn't feel p anything. Pain, emotions. For one of the best feelings of my life, it took a heavy toll. I never got on the swing again. Wow. Wow. I feel like my childhood was awkward. Still seemed rather normal though. My teenage years, on the other hand, were scarier. Oh boy. Once I hit the pu- Once I hit the puberty. <laughs> Once I hit puberty. It wasn't all angst, hatred, and boys. Oh boy. Puberty was such a fun thing. Well, maybe a boy. My teen years were very... Mem memorable. It brought me far more than I expected when I reached high school. Still was not very social, but somehow I managed to get a boyfriend. Everything went so fast, yet felt slow at the same time. Just a blink and it was all gone. But that day I can never forget. We hadn't dated long when he invited me to a party. Oh no! No, no, no. He was only a year older and, than me, so it was not anything special. He was mature, quote-unquote. When we arrived, it was different. Not what I remembered a party to be. The air was thick, almost unbreathable. Everywhere I looked... Oh, shit. Sorry guys, that was my iPhone blowing up all of a sudden with, those, with an alert. Oh my god, that just totally just sensed the mood right there. Sorry about that guys, oh my god. Every, anyway, oh my god, that just blew my... Everywhere I looked, there were the... There were kids of all ages. And I mean... There were kids that looked like middle schoolers. What? They were all kissing, making out, smoking. I was curious and yet disgusted at the same. Oh, I mean, if you're in high school and they're in middle school, it's pretty disgusting. Just saying. Despite knowing what was bad, I wanted to try it. I wanted to fit in. And my curiosity. No, sooner do I think that. Then he came back with booze. And I think it was a cigarette of some kind. He was he offered both to me. Okay, if you're I'm just going to say this right now. If you're uncomfortable in the situation, you think you have to change yourself to fit in with somewhere or to be accepted with a group of people, fuck that shit. Sorry for the sorry for that, but just just don't even bother with that. Be yourself, love yourself, and accept who you are. Like I'm sorry, but I'm going to go with refuse them. After I refused, I was too good for all this. People started talking, and I started to get overwhelmed. I needed to step outside for a bit. After getting some fresh air, I realized that he never came to check on me. That's messed up! That's so messed up! Which made me a little upset, so I went to find him. And I did. Oh no. I should have not done that. There's a... <sighs> <sighs> he was all over another girl. It was devastating. They were almost half naked. Oh, fuck. Ugh. But in the middle of the party, with dozens of people around, how could anyone... He noticed me standing there, mouth gapping open, and the first thing he said, I just couldn't believe it. I thought she was you. Bitch, please! You said you didn't have a girlfriend. Girl, please! <laughs> I did get some sense of justice when she slapped him. There you go. Karma's a bitch. That was it. I walked home, in the cold, by myself, crying. My mother caught me as I entered the door, and we had a long talk. 
She told me so many things that made me feel better about her experience at my age, but it still made me have trouble ever have trouble every trusting a guy again, ever trusting. I can't say all my memories were bad, but it never seems to be the good ones I remember. Shopping with what friends I did have was always a blast. We ate food, got clothes, drooled over cute guys as they walked by. Oh. It was always good fun. Until we had a few new people join our small group. We met them one day at the mall. They were too cool for us. Whoa. Sorry, the cool alert is here. I don't remember how the friendship began, but I know how it all ended. The last time I ever, I ever, I, every enjoy, I think you meant ever enjoyed shopping. It seems like a distant memory after what happened. Dark chocolate is my favorite. I prefer white chocolate, not a fan of dark chocolate, or like, maybe just Reese's is about the max limit, I'll go with chocolate. I was spending all I had for my stash at home. It was running low. After I gathered my hoard, I turned to our new friends and saw them. Sticking stuff in their pockets. They were signaling me to come over. Didn't know what they were, but I had an idea. Hey, grab a couple of these. My pockets are full. Mine too. Hurry up. And don't worry, we do this all the time. I know this is wrong, but it sounded exciting. Something to brag about. A story to tell, even if it is small. That does look tasty. <sighs> I don't know what to, I don't know what to choose. Steal or don't steal. If I steal, they'll probably get caught. If I don't steal, I'll, it's like I'll look like a fool. But she wants a story. <sighs> I'm such a. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go with don't steal, because I just don't believe in s stealing. The next thing I know, a couple of mall cops came up behind us. We are then escorted to some room in the mall. But they lectured us and made a few phone calls. We waited for our parents. I just couldn't believe that this happened. Even now, it's just not fair. I was banned from the mall for life. The biggest turning point in high school years was not even about high school. It was about driving. I always wanted to drive. Why is this so depressing? Ability to get away. Even after my license, I was never allowed to use the car. Or so it seemed. I got my chance when I least expected it. A drive in the movie. No date. Just me. Me, myself, and I. The fresh air. The trees. The movie food. It was just a night I had no one to watch over me. The movie was a double feature of movies that had been in theaters for a while. So it's gonna be a long night. I was gonna love every minute. That's fun. Drive-in theaters are awesome. My bladder didn't agree. Well, soda does do that. And water. I don't want to miss the part of the movie, but I really need to go. And the movie's just getting so good. I was beginning to regret buying the jumbo soda. Well, I mean, you don't want to go in the car, so I mean, I would just go to a restroom. I couldn't hold it in. I had to go. I jumped out of the car, leaving the door open, and rushed to the restroom. Hey, public restrooms. After washing my hands, feeling relieved, I headed back to the car. Now, where did I park? I swear it was over here. Oh, no. It can't be. It's been... From a drive-in? How? This isn't fair. Why me? Why now? Why? After I calmed my head, I head back to the food stand to use their phone and explain what happened to my dad. Ugh. Come on! Like, the girl got the car stolen! Like, you can't be pissed about that! Ugh. He went off the rails. I was irresponsible for leaving the keys in the car. Wait, she left the keys in the car? And there was no security cameras at the drive-in. Police never found the car. Oh, fuck. 
My dad said the insurance wouldn't cover it. Aw, oh, shit. Just another simple choice gone horribly wrong. Couldn't even scratch the surface of my experiences. But some of the biggest things happen when you have to be an adult. After high school, I was forced... Well, not forced, I was suggested to get a job. Parents are such a pain. Well, it wasn't a bad idea, since I wanted stuff, and that requires money. Doing fun things neat is a requirement of money. Though it took me weeks and what felt like hundreds of applications, I wouldn't work anywhere. Finally, the time came. Just as a waitress, but who am I to complain? It was harder than I thought it would be. But I was pretty, according to all the customers. Which got me tips. Really good- Hey! You're making dough? You're making dough. I was making more than I ever thought I would. But as the weeks went by, it seemed like my checks were getting smaller. I tried to bring it up to the owner, my boss, and he just kept burst brushing me off, saying that I am getting paid for what I work. I told my parents, they told me to keep track of my own time. I wanted to trust my boss, but I kept track anyway. My next check was lower than before. Then my record showed that I should have been paid more. A lot more. I brought it to the attention of the boss when I was off, and he responded with all these wild excuses. I tried to fight him on it, demanding my money. You're replaceable. Complain again and you're fired. He walked out of the office for a break, which he did 40 times a day. I noticed something after he left. The safe has opened with a bunch of cash. I worked hard. I wanted what I earned, and I was going to take it, then find another job. Take what you're owed, take more, stuff your pockets. Oh, shit! So there's no way I could just be like, I don't want the money. Oh. <clears throat> stuff your pockets. Take what you owed. Don't take more than that. I took what I thought owed to me. Didn't, didn't want to steal, but I wanted what was mine. Left my apron and told everyone there I quit. It was enough to get me by. At least while I found a different job. Which eventually did with a fair better pay. And a great boss. I feel a bit bad, but I didn't regret what I did. With all the things in life, I remember the scariest moment of my life. Met a guy and he asked me out. What a beautiful night. Such a great date. He was charming, romantic, and caring. Everything you would hope for. At the end of the date, he offered me a ride home. I declined. I wanted to walk home on such a great night. But shortly into my walk, things changed. Oh, Saw something off in the distance near an alley. A kid who was waving his arms at this homeless man. Decided to go do a little investigating to what was going on. Though as I got closer, I saw he had- Oh, shit! He was waving a gun around at the man. Is it real? Wait, is he robbing the guy? How dense am I? Of course he was! Oh, fuck. I don't know what to choose. Fuck. Oh, I don't want to get this girl killed. Oh, my god. Okay. I didn't call the cops. I stayed back silently and called the police, trying to make sure I was hidden. I wanted to be far away, I wanted to leave, but I barely could dial a phone. <laughs> Let alone run. While on the phone with the police, I watched as the poor guy cowered in fear. So I refused to give what little he had. This seemed to be the This seemed to piss the kid off even more. Suddenly the homeless man jumped at his attacker. My heart stopped, watching the homeless man's body fall to the floor. His shooter ramaged through his body, then ran off. <clears throat> I dropped my phone with 911 on the line, ran to him as fast as I could. There was no point. Lightless. Motionless. He was dead. Could it have done something? As everyone was running around, I couldn't keep track of anything. 
Just stood there motionless as the sirens and lights surrounded me. I was questioned for a while about the description of the shooter. But only to find out that my memory couldn't recall anything but a vague description. <clears throat> All that was... Shit. What just happened? Okay. All that was crossing my mind... That image that was burned into me... It took me weeks to recover. And I still haven't gotten over it. My parents described me as completely unconsolable. I felt like I could have saved them. I can't escape how much trouble I feel like I've caused everyone. Mostly my parents. Being an adult has never made me want to be a kid again. Every day you wish you could just be carefree and irresponsible again. That's it. Screw being an adult. I went and got drunk. I mean everyone. Did not care what gender. One guy offered to buy me a drink. He's not going to pass that up. Which was unknowingly one of the worst decisions of my life. Something was wrong. It's not okay after that drink. Things started feeling weird. Thinking I was drugged. The night just got worse from there. He got me into a cab heading somewhere. I was not in control of myself. I wanted everything. But wanted to get away at the same time. My brain made me relieve all of my bad experiences. All at once, and I was sh shutting down. And then being drugged didn't make it better. Next thing I could recall is that he... He, he was touching me. It all changed. Wished I was good and did everything right. Couldn't move. Couldn't scream. Couldn't fight back. This is all my fault. Somebody save me. The cab driver, barely. After we started moving, he slammed on the brakes, looked back and asked me if I was okay. He really shaked my head. It's enough. The cab driver busted out his door and ripped the guy out of the back, oh thank god. Punched him one cold in one shot. This cab driver had no idea what he looked like, and it didn't matter. He saved me from a horrible experience. Whew. Thank God. Before I passed out, he managed to find out where I wanted to go, with the barely audible voice I had. Home. Took out my phone and called my parents. I couldn't stop him even if I wanted to. My parents met him at my house and they helped me inside. Instantly, they fell asleep and then woke up alone. I started crying and couldn't stop. If it wasn't for that driver, my dad called and lectured me on my poor decision making and that I should have been more careful. I hung up and continued to cry until I fell asleep again. I love my parents. They have taken such good care of me through everything. I can never thank them enough, but that is when it all happened, when everything changed. Had to be years now. It is hard to keep count like this. Just a normal day coming home from work. Nothing special. I lived close enough to walk home every day, only a few blocks occasionally pick up a cup of coffee. Waiting. The sign changes to walk. I start crossing. About halfway into the street. Oh, fuck. I was hit by a bus. Since the accident, I hadn't been in a coma. But I could hear everything. Every word the doctor have said. Every single thing about my parents fought about. I wish I could tell them one last time. I am sorry for what I put them through. My parents are still fighting. It's all about money. Me being a burden. And that they can't afford the care I need. Even the doctor is saying that I won't be coming out of this. And at this point, I don't think I want to be anymore. But it's not like I had a choice. And I can hear them. 
I don't get one now. They are coming. If I had one wish, I want to tell them thank you. And that I love you both. So... Fuck. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so fucking sad. Holy shit. I thought I was making the right choices, but apparently... Not doing the drugs, walking away from the guy. Because <sighs> I was doing things in my life where I made mistakes. If I could avoid them in this little story, this short story, maybe we would have a good outcome, but... <sighs> Fuck. I was wrong. Wow. The, f the interesting thing I think about this is the story itself is just, it's definitely breathtaking. And I like the fact that it's just no pictures, no nothing. It's just music and just straight dialogue. Like there's, you pretty much get the visual from that. Wow. Oh my god. Well, that was if one thing changed. And I'm probably going to go back and just find out the different endings for it. But if you guys want to read the story, you could probably play the different endings. I think he said there's about, the developer said there's about four endings. I think like three true, there's like a bad, a good, and a true, or there's like another bad or good, I think. I, I don't know. I just heard there was either three or four, but um, the link's in the description below. Hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching. Wow.